Can you hear me okay, guys? Hello. Well, some of you may remember me from European conference uh, seller that Augustus organized, and I hope you had a good lunch. Today we'll be talking about trademarks. Uh, yesterday, Augustus did a really good introduction about his background, and he used some old photos, so I decided to take the similar approach. Oh, is it working, guys? Okay, I'll just use the laptop. Excellent. So to give you my background, my entrepreneur journey started back in the 90s. It was tough times in the Soviet Union. I'm originally from Ukraine, living in Ireland for the last 16 years. And I was really good at mathematics and physics, and I was helping my classmates to actually pass the exam. That was the time when I started to make the first money by doing coursework for them and other things in the school. And fast forward to right now, I sometimes I refer to myself as an entrepreneur. People refer to me as a problem solver. They come to me with problems and I find them solutions. Uh, I own a number of businesses, including Amazon, private label. I also run a translation company similar to Yana. We've raised a half a million investment uh, earlier this year. And I'm also a business consultant helping clients to register companies in Europe. Uh, file their annual returns, and register trademarks. So today we'll be talking about trademarks. Did you know that uh, last year, uh, United States government office did uh, research, and they figured out that quite a, num a big number of products that are actually sold on popular websites, Amazon, eBay, Walmart, are actually fake. Europe is not really far. Nearly 7% of European products are also fake. So it's a big issue for small sellers, somebody else trying to copy them. Uh, and Amazon, because of that, is facing a number of lawsuits because they're not doing enough to prevent fake goods sold on Amazon. And actually, earlier this year, President Trump signed a memorandum forcing or encouraging the big brands to actually go and do something about it. And they have to provide a report in, in about six months of their progress. So what is a trademark? Uh, I came up with this definition, taking the, the official statement from the United States Patent Office. So a trademark could be a word, it could be a phrase, it could be a symbol or design, it could be a sound, a smell, or even a color, or a shape that distinguishes the source of one product or service from another one, or distinguish one entity from another one. Many people confuse the two signs, TM and R, so I'll help you to clarify that confusion. The trademark is a symbol that anyone can put on their name. So essentially you can come up with a name and you can stick TM. What you're doing there is announcing to public that you're using this name, but it doesn't give you the legal rights to use it or it doesn't actually prove uh, any registration. R, however, means that you have registered your trademark and you have a certificate of registration. What do you need for the trademark? And why do you need it? I promise that I'm going to give you seven reasons. Actually, there is many more, but we'll focus on the main ones. Uh, the number one would be the brand protection. So once your brand is registered, you can prevent others from copying it. It also improves brand recognition once you have something registered. Now think of trademark as a cognac or a property. It gets better with age. The longer you hold on to the trademark, potentially the value of it increases so you can sell it in the future to somebody. Uh, trademarks also make hiring easier. Employees like to be associated with brands uh, th that make them proud. Uh, trademark can also prevent importation. So think of it, you can contact the customs office and at the border level you can actually stop fake goods leaving there. You don't need to go to the court, you don't need to get the solicitor, you can actually do it directly at the custom level. Uh, it's also a tool against cyber squatters. So if somebody gets a domain name of a website that is your trademark, you can actually get it back. Again, without having to go to a court or using a solicitor. And most importantly, trademark gives you access to the Amazon brand registry, which I think you're all doing. So does anyone use already brand registry? Can you put up your hand? Okay. And who's considering getting a trademark sometime in the future? Okay, we have a good, good mix. So Amazon Brand Registry was developed to protect the customer, protect the brand, and also gives the extra functionality to the Amazon sellers. Uh, there was a, an update to the Brand Registry version 2. So with that, once you are eligible for that and you obtain it, you will get the enhanced 
brand content. What it is, essentially, it's a rich media content. So your listings would appear nicer. You can add more images, you can add videos, you can use HTML. So essentially, it's, uh, it gives you more visibility and visual appearance to potential buyers. You can also have a store within the Amazon itself. So think of it like having a Shopify within Amazon, not just listing, but the actual shop within uh, Amazon platform. As one of the speakers were telling yesterday, you also get the brand analytics. So if you have a brand registry, make sure you use it. You can get some valuable information out of it. Uh, brand registry also gives powerful search so customers can find your products quicker if, rather than if you don't have it. And you also get faster support. So if there is an infringement, if somebody is trying to copy your brand, you can contact the support and they take actions quicker. So I'm going to give you this example. This is actually my own product. And two days before coming to this conference, we discovered a fake. So what I'd like to know is find out which one do you think is real? Do you think that this one is real? Put your hand up. Who thinks this is a real product? Okay, and who thinks that the one over there is the fake product? On the left. Okay, so you think the one on the left is, is the real? Well, actually, this is the real product and this is the copycat. So we contacted Amazon and we took them down. Well, two days later, they put up a new listing again, but I'll deal with it when I, when I come back. So Amazon realizes there is a problem. They know that President Trump signed the declaration. They have to do something about it. So they came up with a Project Zero. Who knows what Project Zero is? Okay, I only see like a couple of hands. Well, this is a new, uh, a new pilot project from Amazon. Essentially, they're bringing artificial intelligence to fight the fakes to find the counterfeits. They want the robots to actually go and analyze different listings and come up with algorithms to discover fakes before others do it. Uh, it's also a self-service action. So if you are a member of this Project Zero and you find somebody copying, you can actually remove their listing directly without having to contact the support. Well, small brands will not get it early. It's at the moment in the invitation only a waiting list. So you're going to have to wait and get approved, but big brands will get it first and then probably Amazon will roll it out to smaller brands. Essentially, just press the button, the duplicate is gone. You know, that would be good, but uh, somebody can use it in a wrong way. And there will be also product serialization coming with the Project Zero. So essentially, each product could be given a unique code. Again, to think of it like a barcode for each product that will prevent fakes to get it. So what do you need to get? Uh, brand registry and potentially Project Zero, you need to have a trademark registered, you need to have an Amazon seller account, you need to prove that you own the trademark. If you're not the owner, you have to get the authorization. And of course, you have to get it registered first. People ask me often, should we register trademarks as an individual or as a company? Well, think of it this way. Uh, my, my simple answer would be, company would be a better choice. Uh, if you're an individual, you will ha have no privacy. So all your personal contact details, your name, your address, will be up on the register. Anyone will have access to that information. On the other side, company, they will only see the company details. If something happens to you, uh, God forbid not, but if something happens to you and the trademark will go to the next of kin, your husband, your wife, or your children, which is, you know, an inheritance process, it takes time. On the other side, with the company, if the owners change, the directors change, the ownership remains with the company. Uh, if you were not using your trademark incorrectly, or actually somebody proves in court that you could not use the trademark, think of it this way, even if you get it registered, in the first five years, somebody can appeal that and overrule registration. So there is a five-year grace period, even after registration, somebody can win a battle in court and get it overruled. So if you are not using your trademark correctly, and you have personal property like house, that can be used uh, to compensate the damages against you. But if it's a company, companies usually have limited liability. So you're protecting yourself as an individual. And let's consider you have a trademark and you started licensing it or giving it to somebody else and you start making a lot of money. Well, you will be potentially subject to a high income tax individually, 45, 40, 50 percent. Whether it's with the companies, companies have beneficial way to optimize their tax structure through the holding companies. So my recommendation is set up a business and put a trademark there. You can easily sell it, you can easily transfer it, you can easily control it. For some of you who don't know what trademark licenses is, is basically if you have a trademark and it's popular, you could give permission to somebody else to use your name on their product. But what you want to ensure is the reputation of your brand. So you have to have a quality control process in place. Don't just give it to anyone. 
unless you know they will be doing a good job. People often ask me as well, should we register black and white copy or a color copy? The answer is, if you're registered in the United States, black and white is usually safe. If you're registered in black and white, you can potentially use it in color and you would be safe and protected. In European Union, however, from April 2014, they made a decision that the color trademark is not the same as black one. So if you register black one, you cannot be legally protected by using color. It's only, there is small exception if it's only a small color change or if you're using in, in, in black and white. But if it's significant color, you are not essentially protected. Another popular question would be, can I apply it for trademark if I'm not using it? Yes, you can. You can file in the United States an intention to use. So uh, even if you haven't been using it, you can file it and you, it, you can actually put the name on hold. Uh, you will be given certain time to submit the actual statement of use. And you can kind of drag it along for some time before you actually produce a product or a packaging with your label on it. So if you want to lock something, you can do it in the United States by filing an application without using it, actually. Also, the popular question would be, should we use a name or a logo or both? The answer is both. Uh, sometimes you can have a trademark with the same name, but for different classes. And actually, it's the same name that gets registered, but it's in different classes. And so essentially, if you're, if you're covered for one particular product, somebody else can register the same name for another product, and it could be potentially loved. And there are many cases like that. If you are having a logo, somebody else can come up with the same name and different logo, and potentially they also could be granted. But if you register both the names and the logo, you will be covered better. A couple of four uh, popular court cases. Just recently, a couple of months ago, McDonald lost a Big Mac bottle. They were trying to uh, stop everyone using it. And actually, I'm from Ireland. Uh, I lived there for 16 years, so I was glad to see that the big brand lost this case to the Irish brand Supermax. So anybody could use Big Mac. They cannot do it. Uh, European court also declared Red Bull that they cannot use their famous colors, red and blue. Uh, Adidas lost three stripe bottles. You know, the Chinese manufacturers were very smart and they've been producing uh, shoes with the three stripes without Adidas. Adidas wanted to stop it, but they lost the battle. So you, anyone can produce shoes with the three stripes and Adidas will not be able to take them to court. And Nestle was trying to also trademark the shape of their uh, chocolates and they lost it. So this trademark bullying, we, we are glad to see that the European Union actually stops big brands of trying to trademark everything. But at the same time, you know, it's protecting your brand. Popular mistakes or the common mistakes that we see with uh, people uh, when they're trying to apply for trademark or after the application, they're not doing the proper search. And that's the number one reason for refusals. People who are not doing the search, they pay for the filing, they pay for the fees, and they are getting refused. So do a proper search to avoid that. Uh, trademark sometimes is not used anywhere. So people apply for trademark, but they actually don't, don't use it yet. They don't have it on the product. That's not good either. Uh, sometimes people started to use the trademark, but they didn't do the local registration. So what we advise, uh, if, if you're based in Lithuania or your own home country, get a business name registered locally with your country. And it's usually a straightforward process. It's inexpensive. But once you have a small registration, it's easier than to apply for international uh, registration. Some people call their business uh, with a descriptive name. So, for example, you're a car mechanic. You call your business car mechanic. You cannot trademark that. So if you name your business uh, according to the service you provide or the product or it's a common word, you will not get the trademark registered. It has to be a unique name that could not be associated with anyone else. And we see people naming their businesses or products with something trivial. That's not going to work with trademarks. We see people put in their personal names. Uh, the United States Patent Office looks very closely to the names. You have to kind of associate it. If you just came up with a random name or surname because it sounds nice and it doesn't have any connection with you, most likely you will get rejected. So there should be a story, there should be a reason behind using someone's surname or name. Uh, some people saw a popular brand maybe in a small country or another country and they decided, hey, I'm smart, I'm going to try to do it. Uh, in another country and sell a product with that name because I like it, it's not a good idea. Never use a name of already existing business, even if it's not registered, even if it's everywhere, because you're potentially putting yourself at risk of getting claimed in the future and losing money. Uh, some people actually decide not to use trademark. They 
continue using their name and they assume they own the ownership. Well, if you're using the name, the cost of trademark is inexpensive. So go and get it done. Protect your brand. Don't just continue using it for a long time if it's already making money and if you're planning to grow that business. Uh, some people register trademark and then they decide to change slightly the logo or change slightly the name. That's not a good idea. You're not protected if you're doing that. If you're planning to adjust something, update the records or file for the new application. If you're changing the color, that would also be applicable. Uh, sometimes people register trademark in someone else's name, and we've seen it with different Amazon sellers, putting it their friends, and then when they wanted to sell the brand, and let's say the grandma passed away because they used her password, they cannot easily transfer the ownership. So if you're using someone else's name to actually register trademark, you're potentially putting yourself again at risk. Uh, we've also seen cases where people have uh, changed their contact details and there was an important communication being sent, but they never updated the contact details on the uh, patent office website, which is not good. You should, you should do it. If something changes, please notify the office and get them updated. We've seen people doing mistakes when applying for trademark and those mistakes actually get registered. You know the famous case of the FCUK brand? They filed it and there was a typo. No, it's a joke, guys. <laughs> they, they, they filed it like this. No, but, but these examples are real. So people are putting the apostrophe or they're forgetting a letter and the brand gets registered. And it's there for, for the rest of the life, you know? So spelling mistakes, while it sounds so simple, people still do it. Uh, what to avoid? Well, avoid everything I mentioned on the previous slide. Uh, I'm not going to go into this in, in details, uh, but we've seen people using some amateur trademark consultants in the past uh, that promised them everything and they filed the application and then they got in trouble. They were told that the percentage, for example, of success is 70% when in reality it was only 10% success case. So let's look at the three jurisdictions. I'm not going to go in the first couple of details of fees and everything. You can find out this later. But what I would like to draw your attention that from the 3rd of August this year, there was a change in legislation in the United States. Now, if you're not resident there or you don't have a domiciled residency or business, you cannot actually apply for trademark yourself. You have to do it through a licensed attorney in the United States. So you cannot file it anymore. You have to use a professional to, to do it. Uh, and if there is any office action, so normally if, if the application was not filed incorrectly or if something was forgotten or if there is likelihood of confusion, each time you have to use a solution. So even to respond to the queries, you also have to go through the attorney. In the UK, on the other side, there is a risk with, uh, with Brexit and we've seen people uh, using UK to start their intellectual property by registering trademark in the they, while they're actually living in another country considered like uh, Lithuania. So if you have a trademark in, uh, in UK but you're using your Lithuanian address because one of the requirements for European trademarks you have to have a European address. But after they exit Brexit you may have to switch to the UK address. So if you have a UK trademark and you're not based in UK consider the fact of getting a backup address for your trademark once the Brexit actually happens. But the good thing about UK trademark is that anyone can file it. You don't need to have a legal representative to do it. It takes three, three to four months. It's a very straightforward process. So any trademark is valid for 10 years. If you look at United States, you, you look at, uh, at UK or the Europe, the trademark, once it's registered, it has to be renewed every, every 10 years. That, but if you forget, there is a grace period of uh, six months, uh, but you still can get it back. But if you don't submit the renewal within the grace period, it will be released and somebody can do it. So as long as you renew your trademark, it never expires. Uh, for those who are not based in the European Union, if you're registered in trademark, you must have a European address. So you can use uh, a professional service for that. You can use a representative or you can get... Uh, one of your relatives or friends or partners. European Union would be similar to UK. Again, keep in mind, if you have the European trademark and you're using UK address, after the Brexit, you may have to switch to another address. You won't be able to use your British address, essentially. And it also can be filed by anyone. Uh, it must have the address and it's a slightly longer process. It can take between three and a half to six months. What I'd like to discuss now is the clarify the confusion between the 
UPA, VIPA, the direct European trademark, and the Madrid Protocol. Some people confuse it, and they don't know what's the difference. Well, the European Intellectual Property Office is the organization that actually registers direct European trademark, while the VIPO is the World Intellectual Property Office that monitors the status of international trademark. And VIPO uses Madrid Protocol, which is a process of getting a trademark recognized based on another registration. So if you compare the two processes, the European trademark is faster. Uh, Madrid Protocol can take up to 20, 12 to 20 months. It's safer. The European trademark doesn't depend on anything. If you don't have any trademark registered, you can apply directly for a European trademark. However, Madrid Protocol requires you to have a basic registration in one of the member countries that joined Madrid Protocol. Uh, you can apply directly for the European trademark. Just go online. You only need to have a European address. Uh, with the Madrid Protocol, it has to be uh, applied to the office where you registered your first mark. So if it's Australia or if it's United States, you have to go through the same process, get an attorney or get a professional to do it on your behalf. European direct trademark is an online application, straightforward. Here you have to use a paper. You have to print it, you have to sign it, you have to send it to the office, and then it takes it from there. So it's a bit more complex. And the European trademark could be also cheaper. So our recommendation is... European trademark probably would be a better and easier and quicker choice, but depending on your circumstances, you may need to actually do the Madrid protocol. If you compare the cost, let's say one trademark with three classes in in Europe, uh, you would pay you, in European T UTM you would be paying around uh, 1,100 euros, and for the Madrid protocol you'd be paying something close to 1,700. Uh, I'm not going to cover this slide, it just explains the process of how uh, VIPO works, how the protocol is applied, but you can, you can find this information online. Uh, what you also should consider, if you're going for the European trademark, there is a fast track process. And there are very simple conditions. It's uh, as normal, plus you, you will have to use the classification database that is actually provided. So you cannot tweak it, you cannot adjust it, you cannot kind of put your own text into providing the description. You have to use something that has been already predefined and you have to pay up front. Uh, with a normal application, you can kind of pay it a little bit later. With the fast track, you have to pay up front. And if you are registering trademark that is not, not in the language that... Uh, European trademark accepts, you will have to accept their translation. You cannot use your own one to describe it. And there should be no priority claims. So you cannot kind of claim it in the prior date. So if you satisfy the condition, you can get your trademark registered in three and a half months, pretty much, which is really good. I'll give you now uh, an example how to do a proper search for trademark yourself without having to pay for someone. So this is a real case of one of other clients. They did a basic search. Uh, they did not analyze risk because nothing came up in the search. They filed the TM, and now uh, there is enough a section of the likelihood of confusion with another trademark, and they will, be, they will have to pay at least 500 US dollars now to actually appeal this case. And it's only the first response, but it could be many more. So what they did, uh, they went to the United States Patent Office or one of those search websites, and they searched for the keyboard Albo. And if you see here, like, a few trademarks came up, but you don't see Albo Hess in that list. So the results were actually not as good. Now, if, if it was done by a professional, if it was done by a deep search, we would use arguments like that. So we would search for, they're actually manufacturing air conditioning units. So we would search a combination like this, and as you see, Albo has came up. But if you are not professional, if you do not know how to do it correctly, you wouldn't be able to use it. You know, that's, that's, the, that's why you're hiring somebody to actually do it on your behalf. So that search discovered that there is a potential Candidate that starts with the same five letters, yet it's different by three, but it still can be confused, that's manufacturing exactly the same type of goods that that company is trying to get trademark for. So that risk was not identified at the early stage. And that's now, now they're facing high cost or they can drop out uh, the application. However, there is a really good search aggregator that uh, we use ourselves, and I recommend it for you. It's free to use. It's called Trademark Now. So if you type in your trademark or your name, you can select either the European registry or the, uh, we have five minutes left, I was told, or the United States, and you can select the class. It tells you straight away that your trademark, you see now it's pendant, that's the application of one client, and the Alba has shows with the same class. So potentially it's a risk. So you could do that search yourself before, before applying for trademark. 
So some of the useful websites we recommend to check before applying for trademark or before even talking to any trademark professional. You know, of course, check the official websites if you're going for UK or if you're going for European trademarks or the United States. Do the search. Maybe don't get as complex as I showed in the previous example with arguments, but if you spend a day, you can actually figure out how to search by putting different keywords, different parameters. Or you could use a simple to use trademark now, which is free. Uh, in Europe, there is also a good website called tmdn.org, and they have these really cool tools, TMView, TM Class Design. So you can check all the logos registered in Europe, all the trademarks, and you can spend the whole day researching and finding the name that doesn't exist there. That's a good sign for you to go and get it registered. And there is also a namecheck.com, which isn't uh, going necessarily through all the uh, trademarks, but it gives you a good result if anyone using the same website name or social media name, social media profile. So even if, for example, your name is not used or is not registered officially, it could be used elsewhere. So if you check that website, it will tell you that your name is actually used in places outside of the patent offices. So guys, I don't normally do this type of offers, but if you decide that you would need a help, so I put up this, this offer for the uh, attendees of SellerFest. Normally we charge $350 uh, for the trademark in US. If you sign up today using this link, I'll give you a discount. What I'm also going to do for you, uh, we don't do free searches. Uh, if clients pay us and we find out that there's discovery, we usually uh, charge $100 to do a proper search and recommendation. But if you're going to place an order with us, we do the search and we find that there is actually similar trademark, we'll just refund you back. So no questions asked. You know, you, you place an order with me, we do the search, you're not happy to proceed, we'll refund your money back. So you're not essentially risking anything. We'll do the free search for you if you sign up pretty much by the end of tomorrow. So take this link out or, uh, or read this barcode. And my contact details are here as well if anybody wants to ask any questions about trademark. I usually give, uh, give free consultation to people who come to me. So if you just want to run a question by me, that's, that's no problem. Feel free to contact. Uh, one little comment. Uh, we, I was supposed to launch a new website for this event, but the developers didn't do a really good job. So in the next uh, week or two, the website will be upgraded. So just as you go there, you won't necessarily see the information about trademarks. It's something we've been doing for a number of years, but it's not currently up live. The, the new version of the website is coming soon. So thank you very much. Now, any questions? Any questions from the audience? The question was, if you have a trademark in Europe, do you have it registered separately for Germany? Well, if, if you're using the direct European trademark, you will be covered. But Ger Germany is trying to, to yeah. bend the rules in their, in their, in their favor. But Well, if you, fi if you file the direct European trademark, you're covered because Germany is the part of that program. So the short answer is, it should be sufficient to have the, the European trademark. Okay, we have one more question here. The uh, question I, was about the trademarks in China, if, if they do that. We, we don't file it ourselves, but I can pass you some contact details if you, if you, if you talk to me after the event. And Chinese trademarks, there was actually a famous <laughs> uh, uh, just news not so long time ago. Uh, Ivanka, which is a daughter of, of President Trump, she applied for many trademarks in, in China, and they were all pending. And just after uh, the relationship between China and the United States improved, they got approval. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a few months later, now tariff introduced sanctions. It happened before. So actually, Ivanka Trump got many Chinese trademarks. <laughs> Okay. She can give you good advice how to get it done. <laughs> yeah. One more question. Yeah. 
is that uh, if you need a trademark for color and black and white, that was the question. Yeah, well, the, the, as I said, if you're in the United States uh, and you're registering black and white version of your trademark and then you're using it in color, you're generally covered. And it's, it's safe to do that. In the European Union, it's not safe if the color is it's much different. So if it's black and white and you're using kind of grayscale versions, yes. Or if it's just one color additionally, potentially you are covered. But if it's a number of colors, you're not. So the recommendation is just get two trademarks. I mean, it's, it's, it's less than, than 1,000 euro or, or to get it registered. So it's not, it's not a huge investment to get both of them. And then you're just forgetting about this subject. Okay, we have one last question. That depends how you register your trademark. So if you registered a logo, you have to use logo. You cannot use the name. However, if you register a name and then you use a logo, which is like a variation of different font or different color, but because you use the name, uh, you, you are potentially covered. If your logo is significantly different uh, to the actual trademark name, then you should register both. And ideally, you would register a name and a logo. Uh, if you register a name, you have to use the name in any form, in any font, in any size. If you register a logo, it has to be used exactly as, as logo. You can have it on the packaging. So the condition is that you have to use your brand either on the product itself or the packaging. So on the box or on the paper. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.